Therese with Real Gay TV. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Hi, how are you? I'm sorry. Therese with Real nice Gay to meet TV. You. So I have to say, I was a fan of yours uh, from that show Mismatch. I really. Oh, <laughs> wow, that goes way back. Yeah. It's just that's before yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I anyway, I was excited to get to meet you because I really enjoyed that show and I enjoy, I've enjoyed your work as well over the years. Yeah, so talk to me about this this movie. It was it's hard, especially uh, in light of the things that are going on now. <laughs> well, it's actually great in light of the things that are going on now. It's really uh, giving me a wonderful focus. I've actually um, come into a role of producer after we shot the film, so I've been helping uh, in post with it and it's uh, been a great focus for me and makes me feel like there's something we can do to actually change things and change the world. World. And it's just a wonderful, powerful movie that's really ex accessible to everybody. The way she's inverted the story, where it's normal to be heterosexual and abnormal, I mean, normal to be homosexual and abnormal to be heterosexual, really allows a, a wide range of people to come into it in an easy way. And it's really life-changing. We've had a lot of people come up to us after screenings that, with really powerful responses and of, like, Oh, now I understand my daughter, you know, after 20 years, things like that. It's like, it's, it's really wonderful to be involved in something that's, that's meaningful, you know, not just funny, <laughs> you know, it's like, so. Have you seen that? I haven't, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah. I can't say all the things that I liked about it because I don't want to spoil it. I, I pretty much, I'm sure I know the whole story. I just haven't been able to see it yet. Well, there's, I mean, there's a difference between hearing about things that happen to people than seeing it on the screen, you know, like people getting beat up or... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. Um, I mean, that's why we do it, isn't it? It gives so. homage to uh, Tyler Clemente, to Matthew Shepard, the, the real sermons of the Westboro Baptist Church, the online bullying um, lines that she uses in the film are all real. It's, a, it's all true. And the little, the one that really, I mean, it's all sad, but the, the little girl who, you know, attempts to hurt herself, that, that also really bothered me a lot. Yeah, it's terribly troubling, but these things happen. And the, the, the inspiring thing is that, you know, I did my research, and it turns out that when even one child stands up for a child that's being bullied, 50% of the time it stops the bullying. So we really need to empower our kids to be on the other side, you know, and that they have a choice, and they don't have to be scared and follow the bullies. Wow. Um, I, I was bullied badly as a kid. I mean, I'm here because I'm in the movie. Um, but... Uh, I was bullied really badly from about the age of seven to uh, well, 18. Um, it finally stopped when I went to college and I found myself in a much more inclusive community. Um, and so it just it has, great, it has great personal meaning for me. Um, that's why I'm here. That's quite something to have lived through that all those years. How did you, what did you do to get, get through that? I, uh, I turned to theater. I, I you know, um, I found myself a bunch, uh, a bunch of misfits, um, and uh, and I, I, I found the friends that were, that were good people. You know, who who would make me feel good about myself a little bit. But you know, to be to be honest, it it, uh, it took a good 25 years to kind of heal enough that I could feel like I could, I could be my best self around everyone and not scared. You know, to share who you are. We all need to find ways, and the arts are a great way to to promote tolerance and understanding. I mean, you can't you can't do a play or or play music with a bunch of other musicians without developing respect for them beyond culture, beyond beyond anything. All the things that divide us, they don't need to. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike C. Manning, and I'm here tonight for the premiere of Love Is All You Need. And, um, have you seen the movie yet? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, um, Rocco showed me uh, showed the cast a couple times, so. I watched the movie today, so I'm sorry, I, I just, um, it's quite intense film. It's very intense, yeah, yeah. How did it feel to be part of something like that? Um, well, it's interesting. I've known Rocco for a few years now, and so she sent me the script uh, a while ago, and, and it was right when I read it, I was like, this has to be made. The world needs to see a story like this. And then, um, you know, it was about a year later when she asked me to be in it. I said, absolutely, hands down. Um, and so I was actually just talking to somebody, and, and they said, what do you want to see with this film? And I said, I want people to see it and be touched, and I want people to see it and be pissed off. Because, as you just said, it's, 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 it's almost hard to watch. And, but these things are happening every single day. I mean, you still have teenager, you know, kids committing suicide. You still have kids being bullied. And, and, and you know, I, if this story can help them in some way, then and I'm just 
happy to be a part of it, and I really want it to, to get to as many people as possible. It's easy, you know, sometimes in Los Angeles to forget because we live in this bubble, this microcosm, where people are generally loving and accepting. But, um, like, I'm, I'm a part of um, this organization called Buddha Bullying. Uh, I'm on the board of that, and... and we go to schools throughout the country and we speak to students and it's amazing the difference between you know maybe some kids that are in Los Angeles and kids that are uh, in other places and and bullying is absolutely something that happens all the time and you know especially LGBT bullying and 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 LGBT kids are are, are bullied on a disproportionate you know rate and and so it's it's I'm really excited for this movie and I, I just I wanted to, 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 to change lives, and, and Rocco is, I think she's going to do it. Hi, I'm Michael Zampino. Nice she you. You? So I understand you are the producer on this movie? Right? Yes, I am. I'm the producer of Love is All You Need, and uh, I'm very excited tonight. Um, I think this is, this is the kind of film where once you see this film, you never forget it. It never leaves you. Uh, it stays with you the rest of your life, and I couldn't be a more success to have been a part of Kim Rocco Shields movie. Uh, she's done a phenomenal job and I'm just proud to say that I had a small part in, in, in this whole movie, in this this uh, movement as we like to call it. And the message couldn't be uh, more timely, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we're gonna help spread the word and, and hope that we get to change a little bit of the world uh, one screening at a time. Well, I'm here to see the film. Um, the film is giving us an, an, an alternate point of view that most of us don't actually have to live. And I think it's always good to put people in an uncomfortable position because then the art has a chance to affect them in a way that it never would. So um, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I hear great things about it and looking forward to doing it. I'm the writer, director, producer. Yeah. I, I watched it this afternoon and it was just... It was hard to watch and really powerful at the same time. I think that films should make you feel a range of emotions and we're in a society that is desensitized as a culture. And if I sugarcoated the subjects presented in the film, it would not be as effective. I have had this film change lives. I had a woman come find me after its world premiere and tell me that her mother had seen the film the night before and called her for the first time in 20 years and said, I'm sorry for not speaking to you. I now understand what it's like to be you. And that's just one of the many instances. It's very incredible. Okay, yeah, my name is David Tillman and I co-wrote this film with uh, Kay Rocco Shields. And I heard you say a little bit about what was Rocco's experience and your experience watching the young girl's experience in the film, which is actually my, my true story. Uh, did you, did you that was my story, but when we wrote the short film, we felt like a little boy, you'd say, well, just man up, you know, be brave, take it. But the idea of having a young, blonde-haired, seemingly perfect young girl, we thought would move audiences more. And I have to say, Rocco was absolutely right with that decision. Um, so what I've learned this whole experience was, you know, you ask yourself, why me? Why does this have to happen? And you feel miserable and stuff. And then getting this opportunity to make this film and get this message out is now in my understanding of why me? So that I could come to this point in my life and be able to share it and hopefully change the lives of other people with it. And I was the original girl in the short film that went viral on YouTube. Yeah, so tell me what it's like to be part of something like this. It's amazing. It feels really gratifying and humbling um, to have. I have people contact me every day on Twitter and Instagram saying, You're the reason I came out to my family. You're the reason that I feel like I can be who I am. And to be a part of a film that was so powerful is really something special. Hi, my name is Sabrina Petrini, and I did some of the music in the movie. So I'm extremely excited to be here at Arclight in Hollywood. That's great. Have you seen the movie yet? Yeah. I did. I see a part of it in San Jose at the Cinequest, Cinequest Film Festival. Uh, but I'm excited to see the new cut, and I'm excited to hear the new sound. Tell me, I know you're in the film. I watched it this afternoon. What is it? What you think? It's really uh, intense. It's moving, huh? Yeah. yeah, it is intense, but if you think about it, it, it's really not intense because it's just a reversal on 
what goes on in our daily lives anyway. So I think now more than ever, this is a really great time for this film to be released. Yeah. Arts are the most important thing that oh, people, absolutely. you know. Absolutely, yes. Um, I had a wonderful opportunity to talk to Congress last year on Capitol Hill and say, uh, why are we taking away all the money we can give to the art programs and, and schools across America? We need to to give money to every sort of art program we possibly can in, in elementary schools and high schools and say, you know, whatever you're feeling, put it into the arts and because that's the best way you can you can express yourself. And, and I had such a wonderful time making this film and, and I think you'll see that tonight and it's coming out on what, the 17th? The 17th. 17th. So please go see it. It's a wonderful film. Thank you. Jenica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I saw the film and I know you're you're in it. You play the mother of the little girl, yes, right? I do. And one of the mothers. One of the mothers, that's right. And I that particular story just killed me, I have to say. It it well, it killed me when I read it and it would killed me performing it and Kyla was fabulous, wasn't she? Yeah. I mean it's all sad. I mean it's all hard, but it's also important to see, especially now, I think, in the well, last I, I think as an artist, you don't want to do anything unless it's going to make a difference. So I definitely, when I read the script, usually when you get to the opportunity to read a script or do play a part like that, you, you're excited because you want to make a difference. In the moment, it was, um, I was just impressed with Kyla, her commitment to go there. And it was, and because I'm a mother myself of three, I have a one month old and, um, Yes, I'm sucking it in. I got a one month old, a two and a half year old, and a 12 year old. And the 12 year old was the same age as Kyla, and so, and look, reminded me of Kyla. And it's just, you, I would never want my daughter to go through that. So it was easy to act. Children shouldn't want to harm themselves. That's what I. Right. So, um, but, but again, her performance was so committed, it was hard not to be professional with her and to really go there. In terms of, my character in the film, she's just trying to keep it all together um, because she doesn't want her wife to react or things to be um, changed. And um, unfortunately, our new president ran his whole campaign on change, but I'm not sure it's the change that we all wanted to see, or at least that my group of people wanted to see. So, um, so, so the first person I thought of actually was Rocco because she was on this mission this movement with the film and I knew that she would be in fear and saying this is exactly why I made this film so that was um, she was literally the first person I thought of 2 a.m. nursing went oh sh shoot and uh, tell me about what it was like to work in this movie well I play uh, Bill Bradley in Love is All You Need who is the bully um, and um, working on this film was both a challenge and also such a joy um, you. you know I've, I feel like I've I feel like I learned a lot about the struggles of people like Matthew Shepard and Tyler Clemente and um, other people who have been brutalized for just being who they are um, and that really hit me as an actor and some of the things that I have to do in the film um, certainly were were hard to do but I think it's so important that you show how difficult it is for certain people in the world and you know in the film it's not just it's not just gay bullying it's bullying of all types of people and I think what's kind of brilliant about Rocco's um, in, inversion if you will flipping of the world is that by flipping it, everybody can can put themselves into it. Everybody can see, um, can feel what it's like to be um, to be bullied. So it's really led me to get more involved in anti-bullying efforts and um, organizations, and to make sure that I'm an ally for all people, and um, because everyone deserves to live their life free from persecution. But you know, I think that I think that what it is is that any idea when it is used to harm others um, when it's uh, channeled through the lens of fear that idea becomes extreme and then and then suddenly violence 
happens. And I think that when we start living in a world that's black and white and good and bad and, and there's no sort of uh, desire for understanding or empathy of other people, then I think that unfortunately bad things happen. And, um, and so, you know, for me it was really looking into Bill's character and saying, um, why is he attracted to this extreme part of religion? Because look, there are many religious people who are amazing, wonderful people. But why is he attracted to the extreme parts of religion? And I have some ideas about that. I think that, I think that for Bill, it was wanting that to feel safety, wanting to feel sort of um, a sense of a sense of power. And I don't think that he felt that unless he aligned with something that was black and white, you know. Um, so anyway, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. Thank you so much. So nice to meet you.